If you browse awards often, you have probably seen those trend out websites where elements behave like real objects, falling, bouncing, and responding to user interaction like they are part of a little physics playground. They show up a lot on award winning sites and I've always thought they looked really fun. I realized we didn't have anything on the channel that covers this kind of animation in depth, so I put together this quick demo over the weekend. Using Matter.js, I built this interactive section where each tag drops in with realistic physics. You can grab them, move them around, and even throw them across the screen. What's great is that it's all highly configurable, each object is written directly in HTML, styled in CSS, and then the JavaScript dynamically calculates its bounding box and applies real physics to it. You can also control when the animation kicks in. In this example, it triggers when the section scrolls into view, but you can easily switch it to fire on page load by updating a simple flag. In this video, I'll walk you through how to build this animation step by step using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Matter.js. If you find my work helpful, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive in. For this example, we only need two main sections. I'll call them hero and footer. The hero section will just have an h1 with some placeholder text. This is just to make sure the page doesn't look empty. Now for the footer, we are going to add two containers. The first one is called object container. This is where all the trackable tags will go and we'll use this later to apply our physics logic. Then there is the footer content where you can add whatever content you like. For now, I'll just keep it simple with another h1. Inside the object container, I'm going to paste a bunch of divs with the class name object. Each one will have a paragraph tag inside with some text, but feel free to replace them with h1s, images, or anything else. That's all we need for the HTML structure. Next, let's move on to the styling. We'll start by importing a Google font. I'm using DMSense to keep things clean and modern. Then I'll reset the default spacing and box sizing to make sure everything behaves consistently across browsers. For the body, we'll apply the DMSense font so it's used throughout the entire page. Now let's style the headings. We'll set a larger font size, tweak the weight and letter spacing slightly and give it a nice line height for readability. Next up, we'll make sure each section takes up the full viewport, add some padding and hide any overflow just in case anything spills out visually. Both the hero and footer headings will be centered and I'll limit their width so they don't stretch too far across the screen. For the hero section itself, we'll center everything using flexbox, the background will stay light and the text color will be dark. Now for the footer, we'll flip the colors, the background goes dark and the text switches to white. Let's move on to the footer content container. This sits on top of everything inside the footer. We'll stretch it to fill the entire space, center the content both horizontally and vertically, and make sure it doesn't interfere with interactivity by disabling pointer events. But for anything inside this container, we'll re-enable pointer events so things like links or buttons still work if you decide to add them later. Next, the object container. This also takes up the full space and is positioned absolutely so we can drop our elements into it freely. Now let's style the individual objects. We'll position them absolutely, give them a bold font size and weight, and add some padding and rounded corners to make them look like soft, draggable pills. We'll also set the background to white, the text to dark, and apply a grab cursor to show they can be interacted with. When a user clicks and holds one, the cursor switches to a grabbing hand. Lastly, we'll add a media query for smaller screens. Inside it, I'll reduce the heading size, stretch both hero and footer headings to full width, and shrink down the text size for the objects so they fit better on mobile. That wraps up the CSS. Now that everything looks the way we want, let's move on to the JavaScript and bring this thing to life with some physics. Before we jump into the code, let me quickly explain what we are working with. We are using Matter.js, a lightweight JavaScript physics engine that lets you simulate real-world behaviors like gravity, collisions, and drag forces right in the browser. It's perfect for making interactive elements feel natural and dynamic. We are also using GSAP's scroll trigger and Lannis for smooth scrolling. Alright, let's get started with the setup. First, we'll import everything we need at the top of our script. 
GSAP, scroll trigger and lens. Then I'll wait for the DOM to fully load before running anything just to make sure all the elements we are targeting are present on the page. Inside that event listener, the first thing we'll do is register scroll trigger with GSAP. This step is required anytime we use scroll trigger, it just hooks everything up behind the scenes. Next, we'll initialize Lanis. This gives us smooth scrolling behavior across the site. Now, we'll define a simple boolean flag called animate on scroll. This will let us control whether we want to start the animation when the section scrolls into view or right away on page load. We'll use this a little later. After that, we'll define a configuration object to store all our physics settings in one place. Here, we are setting the direction of gravity, how bouncy the objects are, how much they slide, how much air slows them down, the density, the thickness of our invisible walls, and how stiff the drag interaction feels when you move the objects around. By putting all this in a config object, we can easily tweak the behavior of our scene without hunting through the code later. Once that's done, we'll declare a few variables we'll be using throughout the script. Engine will store our MetaJS physics engine. Runner will keep track of the simulation loop. Mouse constraint lets us drag objects with the mouse. Bodies will be an array to store all our physics bodies and then matching DOM elements. And top wall will be a special invisible wall we add a few seconds after the animation starts. That's the initial setup. Next, we'll write a utility function to help us control how far objects are allowed to move on the screen. Now let's define the core function that sets everything into motion. We'll call it init physics and we'll pass in the container that holds all our draggable objects. Inside this function, the first thing we do is create a new MatterJS engine. This engine handles all the physics calculations like movement, gravity, and collisions. We'll apply the gravity settings from our config and then fine tune the simulation with some extra parameters. We are increasing the number of iterations for constraints, positions, and velocities. This helps us improve stability and makes the interaction feel more realistic, especially when you drag objects around and they collide with each other. We also keep the time scale at normal speed so everything moves naturally. Next, we get the size and position of the container by using get bounding client rect function. We'll use this to figure out where to place our invisible boundaries. Then we extract the wall thickness from our config so we can reuse it consistently across all sides. Now we'll create three static walls, one at the bottom, one on the left and one on the right. These walls are invisible but they prevent the objects from falling off the screen or flying out sideways. We'll place the bottom wall just below the container and both side walls just outside the left and right edges. Each one is sized based on the container's dimensions with extra thickness to ensure full coverage. Once the walls are created, we add them to the MatterJS world so they become part of the physics simulation. Next, we grab all the elements inside the container with the class object. These are the draggable tags we added in the HTML. We loop through each one and calculate its starting position and size. To make things feel dynamic, I am setting the starting X position randomly across the container's width and the Y position way above the screen so they fall down into view like they are being dropped from above. I am also giving each object a random rotation so they spin differently as they fall. Then we create a new MatterJS rectangle body for each one using width and height of the DOM element. We apply the physics properties from our config, things like how bouncy it is, how much air resistance it has and how heavy it should feel. We also apply the initial rotation to make sure it spins as expected. Then we push this object into our body's array. This lets us keep track of the connection between the DOM element and its physics body so we can sync them later. After that, we add the body to the MetaJS world so it becomes part of the simulation. Once all the objects are set up, we'll wait for a few seconds and then add a final wall at the top. This delayed top wall prevents objects from flying back up if they bounce too high or are dragged aggressively. We give it the same width and thickness as the others and place it just above the container. And just like before, we add it to the world. Now that all our physics bodies are set up, let's make them interactive so users can drag them around. We'll start by creating a mouse input. We pass in the container so Matter knows where to listen for mouse movement. Then, to avoid conflicts with scroll behavior, we remove a couple of default mouse fill event listeners that matter attaches by default. This step will help us prevent jittery or unexpected behavior when tracking on scrollable pages. Next, we create the actual drag behavior with mouse constraint. We pass in our engine and mouse and define how the drag should feel using a stiffness value from our config. This determines how loose or tight the tracked objects follow the cursor. We also disable the visual representation of the constraint. We want this interaction to feel clean without any visible lines. 
After that, we prevent the context menu from opening when right clicking inside the canvas. This just makes the experience smoother, especially if you are interacting quickly. Now let's handle what happens when a user starts dragging an object. We set up a start drag event listener on the mouse constraint. When it fires, we store the object being dragged in a variable called dragging. If we are dragging something, we temporarily override its inertia by setting it to infinity. That means the object won't spin or drift on its own while we are holding it. We also reset its current velocity and angular velocity so it doesn't jitter or bounce as we grab it. This gives us a nice controlled dragging experience. Then we add a second event listener for when the drag ends. When the user releases the mouse, we restore the object's original inertia and clear the dragging variable. This lets it go back to behaving like a normal physics object again with all the natural motion it had before. With that, we have got smooth, realistic dragging behavior in place. Next, we'll add some logic to make sure the dragged object doesn't fly out of bounds and then finish firing everything up. We'll listen for the before update event from Matter.js engine. This event fires just before each physics update, giving us a perfect chance to run any constraints or adjustments. Inside this event, we check if something is being dragged. If it is, we find the matching entry for our body's array, which gives us access to its original width and height. We use that to calculate how far the object should be allowed to move in each direction so it doesn't go outside the container. Then we clamp its position and velocity. This keeps it from sliding too far or moving too fast while being dragged. Basically, this logic acts like a soft boundary. It keeps things contained but still lets them feel dynamic and playful. After that, we handle two quick edge cases. If the user drags their mouse outside the container or lifts the mouse anywhere on the page, we reset the drag constraint. This ensures that objects don't get stuck in drag mode if something interrupts the interaction. Now that all the mouse logic is handled, we add the mouse constraint to the Matter.js world so it becomes part of the simulation. Then we create a runner and start the simulation loop by calling run. Finally, we need a way to sync the position of each DOM element with its physics body. We do that with a function called update positions. This function loops through all the bodies, gets their current position and angle from the physics engine and applies those values directly to the matching HTML element using inline styles. We clamp the position values here too, just in case something glitches or bounces too high and we use CSS transforms to rotate each object so it visually matches its rotation in the simulation. Then we call this function recursively using request animation frame so the UI stays in sync with the physics all the times. And that wraps up the full physics setup. Now we just need to decide when the animation should start. We check the animate on scroll flag we set earlier. If it's true, we loop through all the sections on the page and look for one that contains the object container. Once we find it, we use scroll trigger to watch that section. As soon as the section scrolls into view, we run init physics function and pass in the container. This triggers the entire simulation only when the user reaches that part of the page. If animate on scroll is false, we just run the animation right away on page load. And that's it. We have got a fully working, physics-based interactive animation with track support, scroll triggering, smooth sync, and complete control. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.